Okay, welcome everyone to List, Loops, and Efficiency with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Today's topic will come as no surprise. It is List, Loops, and Efficiency. This was suggested by 16-bit member Kevin. He had a question about loops, and I think this will answer it. But uh, definitely wanted to shout out to him, Paul, Jan, Maud, or Mode, and Kim Xiong, uh, my first channel members. I do appreciate the channel support. If you like what you see, click subscribe. If you're able to, please consider joining as a member and supporting more directly. So what we're looking at today is lists, loops, and efficient search through a list. And this is a very important topic in computer science. And I, I'm not an expert on the subject, but I think you'll learn a little bit here today. So our main question that we have to ask is, as the size of a list increases, how can we search the list quickly and efficiently? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to create a list. So I'm just gonna call this numbers. And I have a number down below, so seven comma, one comma, seven, five, six, eight, Oops, eight comma six comma seven comma nine. I missed that right. Three comma oh comma nine. And eight six seven. I think I missed the five. Okay. So basically, probably the first thing that we would try is what's called a linear search. So you can see over here. So let's say we're looking for the number five. We want to know does the number five exist? in this particular list of items. So, you know, as a human being, we just look at it, we can see there's a five there. But a computer cannot do that. A computer has to look, uh, at least for now, at every item and see if it is, in fact, a five. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a loop. So for number in numbers, so if number equals five, because we're looking for five, print, I found a five. At that point, we can just break. We can end the loop because we don't need to do anything else, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run my program. And you'll see here it says, I found a five because there is a five right here in the list. Now, if you give it a little bit of thought, how many items did it have to search? So I'm gonna say, uh, Okay, well, searched items, so searched items. Uh, we'll say number searched. <laughs> searched. Okay, equals zero. And we're going to say number searched plus equals one. Um, there is an underscore here. It's just not showing up on the screen. I think it has something to do with the font. There we go, made it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to say number searched equals zero. And each time through, it's going to add one. And then we'll print, uh, I had to search uh, number searched times. Okay, and I'm gonna make that an F string. So that should work. Let's go ahead and run that again. And for those of you who are curious, I am using the Genie editor. It's free, it's open source. And if I run that, so, I found a five, I had to search seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you can see here, it took seven searches, seven times through to find that five. So if you think about this logically, this five could have been here. So if we exchange the five and the seven, and then we run it again. Found a five, I had to search one times. Should be one time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. But what if we put the five out here and reversed it with the nine? Go ahead and run that. Had to search 10 times. So kind of, you know, logically speaking, you can see that the more items we have, the more times we might have to search. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 items. So the maximum was 10, the minimum was one. So that kind of tells you that the average number would be somewhere right in the middle of that, of that number if we're searching. 
So think about this. If instead of one number, or sorry, instead of 10 numbers, we had a thousand numbers. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import random. Watch that one. I will, I will do that later. I'll do that in a bit. Uh, come back to that. Uh, no, yeah, I'll come back to that one later. Okay, so let's say we had to search for a match. We were looking to see if there was a match between one of the numbers, or between the numbers, okay? Um, so basically, does this number equal this number? Or does this number equal this number? Or does this number equal this number? Does this number equal that number? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to compare this number. Oops, let's scroll that up. Searching for a match. So basically, what we're looking at is, you know, does 7 match 1? Does 7 match 7? Does 7 match 8, 6, et cetera, et cetera? We don't want it to match itself. Okay. Um, then does one match seven, does one not match itself, match seven, etc., etc. So you can see how the number is going to go up. And that's what I want to look at here. So I'm going to go ahead. I still have numbers. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do two indexes. So for i in range, the length of numbers. And for j in range, length of numbers. Okay, so we want to know, we, we need to look at each of these to see if it compares to all of the others. Okay, so remember, lists start at zero. So we want to look at zero and one, zero and two, zero and three, zero and four, zero, five, zero, six, et cetera, et cetera. We want to look at one zero, but not one one. One two, one three, one four, et cetera. We want to look at two zero, two one, not two zero. So we're basically looking at each of them against the entire list each time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do number searched. So we get an, get an idea of how many times it's going to go. And we'll put number searched plus equals one. Okay. Now what we're going to do, if i does not equal j, I don't want to compare 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. So as long as they don't match, then I look and see if there is a match. So if numbers uh, numbers i equals numbers j, print i, j, numbers So what that'll do, it'll print the i, the index of the first number, index of the second number, and the actual number itself. And since they equal numbers i and number j is the same, and then it will print. I'll just copy that. How many times it had to search? Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. Type error. Ah, this should be numbers. My bad. So not number. Let's go ahead and run it. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can see the second one. So let's go ahead and print here. Sorry, real quick. Print. Oops. Print linear search. Search. So it has a nice little output. I'm going to copy that. And searching for a match. All right. Sorry. And let's leave a little space there. Okay, so you can see here, 0 and 2 match, there's 7. 0 and 5 match, it's 7. 2 and 0 match, it's 7. 2 and 5 match, it's a 7. 5 and 0 match, that's 7. And 5 and 2 match, it's a 7. Okay, Which I find very, very interesting. Um, so you can see here, 0, 2 is the same as 2, 0. 0, 5 is the same as 5, 0. 2, 5 is the same as 5, 2. So you can see here we're already, we're kind of duplicating a little bit of our effort, which is part of it. But you also see here 
Notice how many searches there were, 100. Okay, so let's say I double the number here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this. And th this is super, super important for CompSci. So I've doubled the number. I've gone from 10 to 20. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. And you can see that as numbers there. Now this one, because we're only looking for a five, and it was here. But if it had been at the end, if there had only been one five, or if there had been no fives, we would have to search the entire list. Okay? And so we went from 10 to 20. So the, so the increase was linear. We call this n. This is actually called O. I'm not going to explain this any further <laughs> beyond this. Uh, this big N or O N? I think it's a small N. Maybe it doesn't matter. Anyway, this is, if you ever see something called O of N, this would be O of N. As the number increases, so if it doubles, the search space doubles. So from 10 to 20, the maximum is going to be 20. Okay. However, in this particular search, this is N squared. Because when we went from we had 10, that gave us 100. But when we had 20, that gave us 400. So this would be, this would be O N uh, squared. Okay. Again, I didn't really want to talk about big O, but I'm pretty sure this is correct. Um, so you can see, even for a fast computer, if this was 100, it would be 100 times 100, which is what, 10,000? 11,000? I don't know, 100,000? Um, 100,000? 10,000. So you can see it goes up very, very rapidly. Now, of course, you know, a modern computer can be searching through lists of millions or even, you know, hundreds of millions of, of items. So let's say you're looking through a list of credit card, or let's see, social security numbers. Uh, there's 300 million people in the United States. Let's say you have to look, is somebody using a duplicate number? If you have to search through 300 million, compare that against every other number, that's gonna be 300 million squared. Okay, so that, that's, even for a fast computer, that's a lot of searching. Now it can do it, um, but it's a lot, okay? So one thing we could try here, um, because as we saw earlier, there was a bit of a overlap. You know, we had zero, two, and two, zero. So we don't need to search quite like that. Um, there is a way we can we can kind of make this a little bit faster. We can cut it a little bit down. Um, so if you think about this, we can start here and we search here and then against all of these. Okay, so zero and then from zero to the end, or from zero and then one to the end. Then we look here. I don't have to check here because I've already done it. So I go here plus one all the way to the end. Then I go here, this would be I, and J is plus one. I know it's a little bit of a fast thing, but basically you can see how we don't have to search stuff that we've already searched. So let's go ahead and implement that. So this is gonna be I plus one. So I is gonna start at zero, and I'm gonna look against one. Then it's gonna be one, and I'm going to look against all of these. Then two, I'm going to look against all of these. And that's what that does. So I don't need to worry about I equaling J because it's never going to happen. I can get rid of that. And I'm kind of curious to see what this does to the numbers. I actually don't know. Um, so when we did a search for 20, it had to search 400 times. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so in this case, it only searched 190 times. So we cut that number in half, which is kind of interesting, which is, which is a start. 309. I want to see what happens if we make it 10. So 45 times. That can't be right. Um, did I do something wrong with that algorithm? Um, mm-hmm. 
That's right, but I searched 45 times. Number search, number searched. Wow. Well, I did not expect it to be that high, but it did cut it in half. Notice that. Um, so instead of 100 times, it only searched 45 times. Okay. Uh, if I had made it, if we had made it 20, so it went down by half. Then this went to 190. Let's put that in there. Um, so what is that? 45. I'm sure some mathematical formula. I don't have it in my head right now. I apologize. I think it was 190. It said. So you can see how I cut it in half, but it's still a lot. Okay, it's still basically going up uh, exponentially. It's just going up slower exponentially. Okay, so if we made this higher, it is still going up at a very high rate. Um, so this is, I don't, know if this is, I don't know if we can make this one any more efficient, except, well, except by doing what I'm about to do. Okay, so, those are kind of like linear type searches and searching against other things in it. So you can see there's a, two different types of growth here. We've got an ON, which is linear. So as the number of items increases, the size of the search increases at the same rate. So it's a constant rate. So if it's 20, it goes to 40, then it goes 20 to 40. It doesn't go 20 to you know, 400, for example. Um, you can see here we've got N squared. I think that's right. Uh, it's going to go up. So as the number of n's increases, so we went from 10 to gave us 100, 20 gave us 400 instead of 200. So it wasn't a linear. If it was linear. This would be 200, not 400. Okay, um, which is yeah, pretty scary. So how do we search if we have huge, large numbers of numbers? Okay, so for example. Let's say you're a credit card company and somebody tries to buy something online, they use a credit card. Now, credit card companies can have millions upon millions upon millions of credit cards. Let's say there's 100 numbers or 100 million numbers. How can we search 100 million numbers in that short time that we have? Because people will not wait, as you know. One way is to use a binary search. And a binary search. Uh, lets you search a large number of sorted items quickly. And that is the key term here, sorted. Okay, now, I haven't programmed one of these in ages, but I'm going to do my best. So we have a list of numbers. Okay. And first, we need to sort it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just go do it. So I'm going to say numbers.sort. I'm going to ignore the fact that it takes time to sort. That's a whole other question. And I'm going to go ahead and print numbers and see what we have here. So I'm going to print numbers and then sort it. Print numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. And we'll call this binary search. Okay, F5. Okay, so we start out with this. And now we have this. OK, so in this case, let's go back to our original case. If we're looking for a 5, okay, in that case, we had to search 7 times. And again, that's assuming we found it. If we hadn't found it, we would have had to go all the way to the end. Okay. Now, a binary search works this way. I have a list and it's, you can see that it is sorted. Okay. Now, I'm going to look at the middle number. In this case, it is six. Okay, so even though it's, we have to pick one, six or seven, doesn't matter. Um, but let's do six. So I'm looking for a five. So the first thing I ask, does this number equal five. If not, okay, I haven't found it. Now, is this number greater than five or less than five? Six is greater than five. So what that tells me is I can get rid of this entire list. I never have to look at this part of the list again. So then what I would do 
is then I would go to the halfway point here, which in this case is going to be three. I'm going to do the same thing. Is this five? Okay, and if it's not, I do the same thing. Is this greater than five or less than five? And then I'm going to, since it's less than five, I'm going to look at the halfway point between my last one and this one, and this is five. So that took me three checks. It took me three times to get to that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to try and program this again. I haven't done this in ages, so I don't know. I can't, I can't remember quite how to do it. Um, so what I'm going to try and do here is uh, I'm going to get the length of numbers. So I'm going to start. I'm going to say okay. So I'm going to say index. Let's say i. I equals uh, length numbers uh, divided by two, and I'm going to use round here. Round to make sure I get the proper number. So let's go ahead and print i, just see what happens. Okay, five, so that's zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's gonna give me the seven, okay. Now, let's see here. I'm gonna try this. Um, okay, I'm gonna try this, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to do a while true loop. Um, there's probably a better way to do this, but I'll, I'll try this one for today. Um, so, ah, I need to put the number I'm searching for. Um, so target, in this case, equals five. So if numbers, oops, i equals five okay print i found a five break okay i'm done i don't need to search anymore okay now l if numbers i is greater than the target greater than i equals i divided by 2. Okay. So that means I want to go, so I'm here. This is greater than the target. So I'm going to cut that in half and go back to whatever that's going to be. And then what I want to do is, and then it'll just come back around again and look for the 5. The third case is L if numbers I is less than the target, then I is going to equal round I plus length of numbers divided by two. Okay. Again, I'm confident this is going to semi work. Um, now, normally we would do this with recursion, but I don't think most of my viewers or Particularly, my students would know how to. I know my students don't know how to do that yet, um, and I think this will do it. Continue, uh, and why I'm doing continue is because I want to go back to the beginning of this, um, and yeah, I know there. I know there's one problem with this. It has to deal with the case where we never find it, um, but I'm gonna just assume that it exists. <laughs> Okay, because <laughs> otherwise it'll just run forever. Um, okay, so I'm going to try this and see what happens. Now, it found a five. I'm happy about that. But we don't know how many times it took. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, number searched. Um, yeah, so number searched equals zero. And number searched plus equals one. And then I'm going to say, and then we just want to print out how many times I had to search. So copy. Okay, let's go ahead and run it one more time. 
So you can see how it searched four times. So let's see if that's correct. So we started, well, let's, let's print out I each time. Um, yeah, so print I, so we can see what's going on there. Okay, so, so it started at five, we printed five twice. Uh, then it went to two. Then it went to six, then it went three. So it went from zero, one, two, three, four, five. It started here. Then it jumped down to two, the halfway point. And okay, there, there's an error in my my algorithm. I see what I gotta do. Um, I didn't discard the rest of this. Um, now I could have done it with numbers, but I didn't, so that was bad. Um, Okay, so I'll do it a little bit differently. Um, so I'm gonna just gonna cut that in half and say numbers uh, equals numbers. Um, so if i is greater than the target, zero to i. And Put that inside. Copy. All right. So I think this is about right. <laughs> no, it's not right. Um, yeah, this is getting messy. Again, I'm sorry. I know I, I didn't prepare this one ahead of time because I was, yeah, maybe a little overconfident. But anyway, um, hoping this will work. Let's try this. Uh, numbers. Do, 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 do equals numbers i comma length of numbers no i colon length of numbers i just do i all right yeah i just do that and i can just do this all right so that should hopefully cut everything in two let's try it see what happens now we're talking. Okay, I think that worked. Um, I don't need to print I anymore. Okay, so let me run that and see if I got what I wanted. Okay, so what happened? We went to five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. We started at seven. Okay, seven was not right. So then we went, we cut this part off and then we went half. That gave us two. Two was too low, we cut this part off, and then we get another two, and that gave us this, and then it cut that in half, that gave us a one. I think this is working right. Um, so what I wanna try is I'm gonna actually make a random list of numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that out. Well, I'll leave it. I'll leave that there. I'll make a new list. Um, I'm not going to print the numbers because I'm gonna be making a very large list of numbers. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for let's see, say numbers equals blank. And I'm gonna say actually no, I do need to do that. I'm sorry, because um, I want to compare the three. So. I'm gonna hide this and say numbers. And then for blank in range, one, zero, two, four. Numbers plus, no, numbers dot append. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna just use a random number. So x equals random dot rand int zero to, we'll say 4096. So what this is gonna do, this is gonna give us a random number between zero and 4,096 inclusive. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, since we're looking for five, I'm going to uh, numbers.append five. So we know we know there'll be at least one five in this, in this uh, thing, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and see what, if that works. 
Random is not defined. I got to import random. Um, so import random. Okay, this is what I wanted. Excellent. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. So apparently there were a lot of matching numbers there. Okay. So, so you can see here with the linear search, it had to search 524 times to find a match. Okay. So clearly there was a different five in there, not the one that I added at the end because there's 1,024 numbers on there. And then searching for the matches, it had to search 524,800 times because there were 1,025 items on the list, I think. But the binary search to find the five only had to search nine times. And that's the power of a binary search. So even though we had 1,024, we cut it in half to 512. We cut that in half to 256. These numbers just happen to match. Uh, we cut it in half to 128, or does it always match? Uh, 64, boom, 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 and we finally found a five. Okay. So if I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and make this, I'm going to double this. Let's see, I'm going to clear this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and double the number from to 2048. We'll see what happens. Okay. So you can see there's lots of matches in this particular case. Um, Ooh, now we can't see the printout. Um, since we're not really looking at the match thing, but you can see how those numbers go up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and not print that. I'm just going to go ahead and put pass. It'll still run, but just won't print it out. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, so for our linear search, in this case, 330 times. So that tells us there was a 5 at the 330 spot. The binary, sorry, the, the searching for a match, 2,098,000 times. Now it's fast. The computer's fast. Um, the binary search had to do it only 10 times. So we're comparing the binary search to the linear search. So you can see how much faster it is. So let's go ahead and make this, I don't know, 2, 2, 7, 6, 8. Let's make it a really, really large number. And I don't even know if the computer can handle that. Um, let's make this a large number, 32, 7, 6, 8 as well. So hit F5. See how searching for a match is waiting? It's still running. That's how many items it's searching for. So there's only one 5 because they had to search 32,769 times. Now the match part, you see how long it's taking? It's still running. I'm going to have to stop the computer. I don't even know how long it's going to take. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the things where I should probably edit the video, but I, I can tell you I, I will not. Um, but because it's exponential, it's 32,768 uh, basically squared divided by 2 um, is what, what we've been seeing, roughly. It's still a very, very large number. But the linear search said it found a five, so there was only one five because it went all the way to the end of that list. I got a little ambitious with the 32,000, I guess. But I do find this kind of stuff very, very interesting. But what we're gonna really, what we wanna really see is the, is the binary search. So instead of searching 32,769 times, how many times will the binary search have to search? Okay, maybe I'll stop that. Uh, okay, so let's change that number to, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just get, just, just comment that part out. Um, so I don't know, I don't even know how to do that on this one. Okay. Edit, insert comments. Uh, format, comment lines, there we go. There's probably a keyboard shortcut, I just don't know it. Okay, so we're looking at our linear search 
and we're going to compare that to our binary search. So we have 32,768. Okay, so again, it had to search 32,769 times. And well, this algorithm only had to search 13 times. Again, this is because it is sorted. Okay, so the sorting is, is very important to a binary search. Um, let me go ahead, let me just go ahead and make some big numbers and see what happens here. Um, so you can see here, let's make this, uh, let's make it what, 65536 and see how many times it takes. Okay, so 27,000, so it found a five in there somewhere. But the binary search only took 12 times. So 12 versus 27,584. Because this is linear and this is called log. This is log base two. Um, I won't bore you with the math, but long story short, it's way faster, okay? So even if I made this number just ridiculous, um, let's, let's try it. So that's how many millions? So that's 100,000. That's six billion numbers. So let's see, I don't know, see what happens. I'm kind of curious. Okay, notice we're waiting for the linear search to find a five. Actually, no, we're actually waiting for it to make that. There's probably not, it's probably the memory issue. But let's see what happens. Or, <laughs> or it could be actually the sorting. I forgot about that part. Um, let's go ahead and kill that. Um, yeah, I forgot about that part. Um, so yeah, because we actually sorting sorting it takes longer. Um, I kind of glossed over that. But uh, okay, so there's one million. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that was a little bit of a, a drain. So eighty four thousand. There was a there was a five at eighty four thousand, and then once we sorted it and then did the binary search, it only took fifteen times. So the key thing here, if you're going to do binary searches, is when you add an item, you should add it sorted, because you don't want to sort it at because sorting just takes a really 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 long time as well. Um, if you can sort it, you can search. So it's much better to start with a sorted list, and that that's what was taking all the time I think. So anyway, I hope that helped. Um, again, my purpose wasn't quite so much to talk about the code on this one, but you kind of get the idea. And again, this is something that normally you would do with recursion. Um, and there's actually another way to do this. With I could have used, I think, two variables. I just didn't, um, silly me. But uh, this was, I think, was easier to understand. So just kind of a quick review. If you have a list of a lot of items and you want to search for it, you know, if it's a small list, you can do a very quick linear search. Okay, if there's, you know, 100 items, it's not really going to matter unless you're doing it, you know, a thousand times a second. So you, you have to really think about the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, but there's different types of growth. And O of N, so big O N means that as the number increases, the time increases linearly. So you go from 10 to 20, the time goes from you know, let's say it takes five seconds, you go from 10 to 20, time will take 10 seconds because you're doubling it. Uh, so it's linear. There is uh, exponential growth where you have, you know, some exponent here. Usually it's like n squared. Um, so where you're searching two things against each other and you have to search everything against everything else, even though we can cut it down just a little bit by about half, it's still growing at this very, very fast rate. So you're seeing exponential growth. And then the last one was a binary search, uh, which is big O log, I think it's log two. Um, I could be wrong on that. If anybody knows, you can comment down below. But it's something, something along those lines. Uh, log N, sorry, log two of N. So I think it's, I think this is it. Um, o uh, log base two of N. Um, Pretty sure that's what it is. So, because it's, it's the way logarithms work, well, I'm not gonna do, bore you with the math, um, but anyway, that's basically it.
pretty sure. So because you're cutting it in half each time, if you, you know, you double it, then you're only adding, each time you double the number, you're only adding one extra search because you're cutting it in half each time. So it's, it's pretty darn powerful, um, assuming that the list is sorted. If the list isn't sorted, a binary search will not work. Um, anyway, uh, Kevin, I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to, this is a little theoretical or if you wanted it a bit more practical on game type programming, but uh, this is uh, an important topic, especially if you're gonna if you're really looking into computer science. So I hope this helps some people more than it hurt. <laughs> Again, uh, I know this is a little bit messy code, but uh, I think it's followable. I think. So anyway, have a good night. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, join as a member if you can. Keep on coding. Take care.